something that I'm really guilty of is not structuring my practice sessions in a productive way because I want to play all the fun stuff first. But today, since I have a lot of hard music, I'm going to put all the hard music at the beginning of my practice session so that I have the most amount of concentration. And I'm not just going to sit here for like an unexplicit amount of time, if that makes sense. Like I'm going to practice for maybe an hour because um, I don't want to, I don't want to get frustrated, especially with transposing. Because transposing just makes everything hard. Like it could be a whole note and I still have to think about what note I'm playing. Another thing I'm doing, which you may or may not be interested in, is I am basically going to be going through all of my reads and picking out the cream of the crop, the creme de la creme of reads. And whatever read just doesn't sound good, we are going to do away with because I don't have time to deal with reads that are no good. And I have about probably 15 or, or 16 reads. Happy read day. Right away, this is so much easier than the Bruckner. I can sight read the majority of it. There's some really fast parts that I'm gonna need to practice, but already I feel so much better. The Brahmses are easy. I'm gonna move on to another hard thing, which is the Sonatina. Do you ever get so caught up in practicing that you accidentally play on the same read for 45 minutes, forgetting that you have 16 more reads left? Let me tell you, it is a completely different story today to open up my reads and know that every single one of these plays well. It takes the decision-making process out of it and it prevents me from playing on one read all the time and only having one, one read that works and then when that read dies, left with 10 mediocre reads. These are all reads that I'm happy with. This is so good. I came dressed as a tropical depression. We are going to rehearsal uh, to catch you up in the timeline. My last video of the Beast concert, that was last night. That was less than 24 hours ago. I'm not gonna get sleep this week because this week we're doing some crazy stuff. Like tonight we're playing like beautiful classical music. Tomorrow we're doing something completely different. It's probably in the title because I'm really excited about it.
Last night we played Brahms and Mendelssohn. Tonight we're doing something completely different. And so enjoy this montage of us seeing Bad Religion. Vic will be there, we love Vic. Yeah, Bad Religion, Social Distortion at the MGM in Fenway. Good this looks. We have a friend staying with us, but there's like no signs of life, except for that. The general vibe of my vlog is like on to the next thing. So we're on to the next thing. No, nothing's on fire. It's boiling water. Last night was super fun. Bad religion absolutely rocked my socks off. I'm getting ready for a photo shoot.
it's for you Ventas new music on ensemble um we take pictures every year this year though we're doing it on like a wednesday morning at 10 o'clock so i'm literally going to be wearing like my formal concert attire on a weekday morning looking fly as heck though so i just uh dried my hair i'm gonna go in and straighten it what's gonna make this morning better is coffee so i'm showered i'm moisturized my hair is halfway done i just have to style it then i have to go get my car before i get dressed because my car is parked wicked far away Ugh. forgot about that look at how fuzzy my hair is oh my god and then full glam walking to my car in a hoodie. Okay, so this is the dress I was gonna wear. It's got a couple of problems. First of all, it feels really loose up here. It's got the, you know, I just don't feel, <laughs> I don't, I don't feel super confident in the, in this. Like it's, it's just like the material is, is kind of thin. Like it looks, absolutely beautiful from fire but the reality is this has been sitting in my closet it's also like kind of wrinkled like the material is just like thin and kind of worn and it doesn't fit right kind of like over like in this area like i said far away it looks great up close there are some issues if today's a photo shoot i want to be wearing something that i feel like i look my best in and I just don't feel like this really fits anymore. This has been my black formal dress for a while and I've had this since college. I'm 34. So I think it's time to retire this dress. Are my eyebrows the same? They don't look bad, right? Is it too much? Oh God, now I'm, now I'm overthinking. So I'm gonna put on my jumpsuit, pointy shoes and my jewels and then we'll head over. Anybody with curly hair knows that the worst days to straighten your hair are the days when it's raining. Frizz balls. <laughs> it's the obligatory day after the concert, so of course, you gotta wear your concert shirt. You can't even see me. Hi, so we're gonna head in the direction of home. We're gonna stop at a lunch spot, get some food. And then tonight I have rehearsal for Brahms and Mendelssohn. I just took a nap so long that I like woke up and didn't know where I was or what day it was or if it was AM or PM. <gasps> zoned all the way out. Oh my god. Okay. My Fitbit, it's it's like, oh, it's water resistant. So like you can get it splashed while washing the dishes or you can go for a swim. Like those are two very different phases of being wet. It got submerged in the shower this morning and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take it off. I'm just gonna leave it here. sensing the vibe that we have a concert and I haven't really shown you anything about the concert and I haven't recorded anything from the concert the next time I'm gonna be with this group is the performance so you're not gonna hear <laughs> anything but the fact that I'm playing a Mendelssohn piece called Die Erste Walpurgisnacht there's not a piece that's more up my alley it's based on a poem about the literally quote, telling the efforts by druids in the heart's mountains to practice their pagan rituals in the face of new and dominating Christian forces. If that is not a piece that is right up my alley, I don't know what is. Another piece that we're playing is, I think it's pronounced Nanya. It looks like Nani, but I think it's non Nanya, as in the Chronicles of Nanya. 
Uh, also, it's set on a poem. Do you, do you see a pattern here? The real question is though, does insurance pay for stolen airbags or catalytic converters? No. Well, they broke a window. It's not like they, mm -hmm. oh, you know, right. slyly got in <laughs> without, you know, damage. But like, I don't even know. I don't even know how to open the hood of my car, let alone get an airbag out. They probably just YouTubed it. Continuing this conversation from home. What were we talking about, Nanya? Narnia, Narnia, Nar, It's a poem about the inevitability of death, and like literally the first line of the poem slash piece of music is quote, "Even beauty must die." Even though that's kind of a depressing sentiment, it's an incredibly well written and beautiful piece. The last Brahms is called. Schicksalsleed? I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. Like, that can't be. Schicksalsleed. Schicksalsleed. That, that can't be. It's thought of as, like, Brahms' best choral work, along with the um, Requiem. And it took him, like, four years, I think, to finish writing it because he couldn't decide how to end it. And I gotta say, it's a great ending, and it's got a great beginning. And the middle is fabulous because it's Brahms. And that's the thing about Brahms. It always took him forever to complete a composition because he strived for perfection. And if things weren't, you know, up to par, he would just like burn it. Is it about Switzerland? Oh, spirit land, not Switzerland. Oh my gosh, I'm like, I'm reading the text right now. Schicksalsleed translates to the song of destiny, which is pretty epic. Is this also about death? Luminous heaven breezes, their heavenly vision. It's a lovely poem, Schicksalsleed. So those are the three pieces that I'm playing tomorrow. The clarinet was like personified by Mozart to be the instrument closest to the human voice. Mozart is kind of a well-known figure in the classical music world. Whenever I am feeling uninspired, I listen to singers and vocal music because that is like the most natural instrument. Like we all have a voice, like the phrasing, the breath, playing something the way that I would sing it. By playing a lot of choral music, it means a lot to me. And I've had a ton of experience with orchestral music and chamber music, but not as much experience with choral music. And I love this because these are pieces that I've never heard before and discovering one is like unwrapping like a, a gem. It's a great way to live. Every Mother's Day, there's this thing called Lilac Sunday where all of the lilacs are in bloom, but I'm actually not gonna be here for Mother's Day. I'm gonna be in Providence with my mommy. So I'm going to see the lilacs a couple days early. It smells so good. <laughs> because I pretty much missed fall this year uh, due to musical activities. Um, but this is, this is pretty poppin'. We tried to go see the Aurora, the Aurora but, but we got McDonald's. Yeah, we're instead we just hit the 24-hour McDonald's in Lawrence. It's, yeah, now, now we're gonna go back.
concert day and this is my outfit. These are actually like fake. There's no fly because they're stretchy. We're gonna change the shoes. This, this is actually exactly what I wore to the Bruckner thing, I think. What is with my clothing? Just like being old and like the fabric showing its age. Like it's not cute. Well, it is, but like I'm gonna practice here for one hour and I'm not gonna practice any of the music tonight. I'm actually gonna practice the Valerie Coleman because um, I feel really good about the music that I'm playing tonight. I get paid to have like an awesome experience tonight and be a part of this amazing orchestra with the choir. It's in the Harry Potter theater, like the Hogwarts theater uh, that we were in uh, for the Bruckner. I have been teaching nonstop since 10.30. It is four o'clock now. That's a lot of hours without much of a break. So I'm gonna pee, I'm gonna get some water, I'm gonna take a walk around the school. Anyway, I'll catch up with you in a bit. You wanna see something completely gross and disgusting? Um, so remember all that time that I spent on reads trying to find the perfect one? Um, something about humidity. <laughs> is that it creates mold. This is a moldy, like that, there, there is, that is alive. I have to throw this out or on this one, but no, embarrassing. Cause I'm like a professional clarinetist and like all of my reeds molded, like, ugh. ew. Valerie Coleman, page three. so hard it's so hard this is the hardest piece i've had to play and the thing is it's not even at tempo this is under tempo this is the tempo i'm playing it at 108 this is the tempo it's supposed to be at and even though it might not sound like much of a difference to you as a listener the difference is here We have free parking, but it's at a different parking garage and it's a lot further away. And I literally have no idea where I am right now. I think that's Harvard. Ah, that looks familiar. Of all the times that I've played here and been here, I had no idea. That was a way in. <laughs> Why does this feel wrong? 